qualitative and quantitative research. We all know that qualitative research is used to analyze those data which cannot be quantified. In this lesson, we will understand qualitative research methods, qualitative research applications, quantitative research, and various methods of quantitative research. After going through this presentation, you should be able to explain quantitative research, describe qualitative research, define types of scale, discuss attitude research, explain motivational research, understand techniques of quantitative and qualitative research. Let us begin with defining. Qualitative research deals in words, images and the subjective. It develops and employs mathematical models, theories and hypotheses pertaining to natural phenomena, involves large samples of subjects, deal with cause or effect, also associated with positivism. That objective truth can be known with certainty that it can be gained through rational methods. Quantitative research focuses on the left brain, objective, comfortable with logic, numbers and unchanging static data and detailed convergent reasoning rather than divergent reasoning. Quantitative research deals in numbers, logic and the objective. In quantitative research, work can be done with a range of models, theories pertaining to human phenomena. It involves small groups of participants, interpretation and reflection, speech and text, and their interpretation are very important. People's accounts of their actions are significant, not positivist, no objective truth, different interpretations, no final certainty in knowledge. Qualitative research deals with the right brain, the hemisphere accountable for processing data as words, emotions, feelings, color and music. Scale may be defined as any series of items that are arranged progressively according to the value and magnitude into which an item can be placed according to its qualification. There are various types of scales. These are nominal scale. It is a scale in which the numbers or letters assigned to objects serve as labels for identification or classification. It is also called as yes or no scale in research activities. Terms used for colors. Ordinal scale. Ordinal scale is a scale that arranges objects or alternatives according to their magnitude in an ordered relationship. In this scale, ranking can be done as excellent, good, fair or poor. It helps in mode and median calculations. Interval scale. It is a scale that only arranges objects or alternatives according to their magnitudes but also distinguishes this ordered arrangements in units of equal intervals. It is standard survey rating scale used for ranking and measuring the interval between two numbers. Rate your satisfaction. Zero point is arbitrary. Ratios cannot take between numbers on the scale. Calendar time is such scale. Mean, median, mode are valid. Ratio scale. A scale having absolute rather than relative quantities and possessing an absolute zero where there is an absence of a given attribute. Data represents actual amount of a variable. Ratios between numbers are meaningful. Financial researcher uses this scale because mean, median, mode Geometric averages are valid. Use of physical attributes, weight, distance, etc. To contrast interval and ratio scale, temperature scale. Attitude may be defined as the degree of positive or negative effect associated with some psychological object. Attitude comprises of three components. First, a cognitive component a person's belief or information about the object. Second is an effective component, a person's feeling about the object such as like or dislike, good or bad. Third, a behavioral component, 
a person's readiness to respond behaviorally to the object. The study and measurement of attitudes is important since it is assumed that there is a relationship between attitude and behavior. The research, however, indicates that such a relationship holds more at aggregate level than at the individual level. Attitude may only be one of the factors influencing behavior. There could be other factors beside attitude which may be more powerful in influencing behavior. Motivation research states that it is not the functional factors that always matter, but many a times non-functional factors matter which play a very important and vital role in purchase decisions. Motivation research calls for in-depth interviews with selected consumers to know the real reasons, their deeper motives which are triggered by the product. Goal of focus group is to learn and understand what people say and why. Characteristics of focus group. It consists of 6 to 12 people led by a trained moderator in-depth discussion on one particular topic or concept informal atmosphere and duration is one to three hours. The advantage of focus group is that this technique provides more sophisticated data because of the interaction among different members of the group. It also offers other benefits of depth interviews and offers in addition the advantages of saving cost, time and resources during data collection stage. The disadvantages are as the samples are small and invariably non-probabilistic, extrapolation of findings is not permitted. Responses of individual members are not independent and are influenced by what others have to say. Some respondents dominate the proceedings and try to force their opinion on others and some are very shy or nervous and have very little or nothing to say though they may feel strongly on the subject. Goal of in-depth interview is to collect as much as attitudinal and behavioral data from the subject. The characteristics of in-depth interview are a well-trained interviewer plus consumer. Consumer is exposed to set of probing questions and it takes place usually face to face. The primary advantage of the depth interview technique is its ability to discover motivations. Marketing decisions like the choice of product, methods of selling and advertising appeals, etc. must be decided only after receiving feedback from consumer. The second advantage of the depth interview procedure is that it encourages respondents to express any ideas they have. There are a number of weaknesses in the depth interviewing approach. First of all, Depth interview takes much longer than a typical structured questionnaire filling. It may lead to respondent fatigue and hence may lead to biased response. The second weakness of the depth interview is the lack of systematic structure for interpretation of the information obtained. This requires a trained psychoanalyst. It is difficult to find the qualified and trained people for conducting depth interview. These are unstructured prompts or stimulus that encourage the respondent to project their underlying motivations, beliefs, attitudes or feelings onto an ambiguous situation. They are all indirect techniques that attempt to disguise the purpose of the research. In word association, customers are required to show response to the concept they are told within two to three seconds. In sentence completion, customers are required to complete sentences or stories in their own words. In role playing, respondents are asked to assume the behavior of someone else and useful for emphatic approaches for conflict resolution. Picture interpretation, a technique whereby respondents are shown a picture and are asked to tell a story describing it. In this slide, comparison is given. Go through it.
quantitative research techniques are part of primary research. Observation research can be defined as the systematic process of recording patterns of occurrences or behaviors without questioning or normally communicating with the people involved. Experimentation method is a scientific investigation in which an investigator manipulates and controls one or more independent variables and observes the dependent variable for variation concomitant to the manipulation of the independent variables. Experimental research is also called experimentation. It is a research process in which one or more variables are manipulated under conditions that permit the collection of data that show the effects, if any, such variables in unconfused fashion. The survey technique involves the collection of primary data about subjects, usually by selecting a representative sample of the population or universe under study. Surveys are often conducted simply because it's the only way to get the information needed. Telephone surveys also allow for random sampling, allowing for the extrapolation of characteristics from the sample to the population as a whole. Depending on the method of survey administration, there is a number of sampling frame considerations, such as who can or cannot be reached by fax or internet or whether there is a sample bias. Face-to-face -face interviews are a direct communication, primary research collection technique. Door-to-door -door interviews introduce different types of bias, since some people may be away from home while others may be reluctant to talk to strangers. Now let's see how much you have learned till now. State whether the following statements are true or false. The depth interview is the same as a focused interview. True. Scaling refers to the process of measuring of attitudes. True. The face-to-face -face focus group is the best tool to interview geographically dispersed respondents. False. Before we end, let us briefly revise what we have studied till so far. Qualitative methods focus on generating exploratory initial insights into problem opportunities. Depth probing of hidden attitudes, feelings or behavior. Qualitative techniques are focus groups, in-depth interviews and projective techniques, etc. Quantitative research deals in numbers, logic and the objective. In quantitative research, work can be done with a range of models, theories pertaining to human phenomena. Quantitative research is interested in using formalized, standard structured questioning, whereby response options are predetermined to be administered to significantly large numbers of people.